Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We are going to introduce an important uh, special class of contextual grammars called uh, linear grammars. Further, we discuss even uh, restricted class which are useful to understand uh, regular languages better. What are linear grammars? A gram a CFG n sigma p s is said to be linear if every production rule of G has at most one non terminal symbol on its right hand side. That is, if you take any production rule A goes to alpha, then either alpha is a terminal string or it is of the form x b y for some terminal strings x y and b a non terminal symbol. Now, accordingly we call the languages generated by linear grammars or uh, linear languages. Uh, let us look at some, some, some examples. We have CFGs for a power k k greater than equal to 0. What is the grammar that we have introduced? For this language, we have discussed like this. This this grammar generates a power k k greater than equal to zero, and you can clearly see that there is at most you know one non-terminal symbol on the right-hand side of each production rule. Because we said that either it is a terminal string or on the right hand side of production rule there can be one non terminal symbol. So, here there are two production rules one is empty one is having uh, empty string on its right hand side and other is having a s. So, each production rule has at most one non terminal symbol on right hand side and this grammar this C f g that generates the language a power k k greater than equal to 0 is a linear grammar. And, uh, we have introduced a grammar contextual grammar for a power n b power n and where the production rules we gave it like this. Again you see that there is at most one non terminal symbol on the right hand side of each production there are two production rules here and thus you can see the grammar what we have introduced for the language a power n b power n greater than equal to 0 for this that is also a linear grammar and hence this language is linear. Also, we have introduced a grammar for a power m, b power n, c power m plus 1 for all m n positive, I mean uh, non negative. So, for this the grammar what we have introduced you can clearly recollect and, uh, uh, and observe that clearly it is a linear grammar. In contrast, let us consider the following C f g for the language because I asked you to work for a contextual grammar for this language. For example, one can consider suppose if I consider this contextual grammar for this language you can clearly see that you know S is S can be A B these production rules this S can be A B this production rule is having two portions a and b and the portion a produces the st string of the form a power n b power n and b produces b power m c power n. So, that the desired string can be the desired string can be uh, derived through this grammar. For example, this v goes to b 
B C. This is how it is given, or you can terminate. So this is actually following the philosophy behind the grammar, which generates a power n, b power n, such that n greater than equal to zero. That example. Only thing here, since we have to produce strings of the form a power m, b power m plus n, c power n. So any string here, you can see a power m, b power m, c, uh, b power n, c power n. That is what is the form. So here you have two parts, a power m, b power n. Through the non-terminal symbol a, you can generate, and b power n, c power n through the non-terminal symbol b that you can generate. And if you consider the production rule, s goes to a b. This takes the concatenation of these two, and thus this grammar, and thus this grammar can generate the language a power m, b power m plus m, c power n, m n greater than equal to zero. And in this, if you consider this grammar for this language, you see here is a production rule s goes to a b. On the right hand side, you have two non-terminal symbols, and thus this grammar. For this language, is not linear because every production rule should have at most one non-terminal symbol on the right on its right hand side. So here is a production rule in which you have two non-terminal symbol on its right hand side. Thus, this grammar is not linear grammar. Now, you can observe the po this point. If G is a linear grammar, then every derivation in G. Is a leftmost derivation as well as rightmost derivation. The reason why here, yes, there is exactly one non-terminal symbol in the sentential form of each of internal step in the derivation, because every production rule has at most one non-terminal symbol on its right-hand side. So each sentential form you will have only one non-terminal symbol. Thus, when you apply a further production rule, you will be applying on it, and thus. What you can understand that that is only non-terminal symbol available on its in in, in any say only one non-terminal symbol will be available in each sentential form of each each step in a derivation, and thus you can treat it as first uh, non-terminal symbol that is the leftmost non-terminal symbol that is as well as it is rightmost non-terminal symbol, and thus each derivation is you can understand that it is a leftmost derivation as well as rightmost derivation. Now, we'll introduce some more restrictions on this linear grammar to go further in the direction of regular grammars. And these regular grammars, what we are going to introduce is essentially to uh, uh, give the facility to understand regular languages better. Because in the beginning, we have already mentioned that the grammars that we are introducing here. In the context of regular languages, you know, to understand them better, we are introducing. That is how we have mentioned. Now, the the tool CFG, how languages can be generated, and all those things we have introduced, and certain examples that I hope now you are familiar with. Now, the notion right linear grammar will give you the concept of regular grammars to understand regular languages better. So now, how do we define this right linear grammar? A linear grammar, you consider a linear grammar. That means each production rule on its right hand side you will have at most one non-terminal symbol. But we put further restriction that it is said to be right linear. G is said to be right linear if the non-terminal symbol on the right hand side of each production rule, if it is available, it should occur on at the right end. That is, each production rule, the right-hand side of each production rule, is a terminal string followed by at most one non-terminal symbol. That means either it is of the form a goes to x, for x a terminal string, or it is of the form x b, where x is a terminal string and b a non-terminal symbol. That means a terminal string followed by at most one non-terminal symbol. That is, that is the restriction that we are considering, and uh, such linear grammar is called right linear grammar. Similarly, one can uh, 
define left linear grammars in which each production rule, I mean right hand side of each production rule is of the form at most one non terminal symbol followed by a terminal string. So, that means a goes to x or a goes to b x of this form. And now again you can uh, see the similarity between these two definitions and thus any result that I will observe for right linear grammars, one can imitate to get a parallel result for left linear grammars also. And in fact, what we can understand, what we can observe is the notion of left linear grammars is equivalent to right linear grammars. What is the meaning of equivalence here? Whatever is the language that you generate through a left linear grammar, corresponding to that language, you can construct a right linear grammar and conversely. That means, for a right linear grammar, whatever is the language that you have corresponding to that language you can construct a left linear grammar. That is the equivalence here left linear grammars and right linear grammars are equivalent. To prove this result you know we will be introducing some more tools and at that time I will recollect and we will remark once again uh, and um, how to understand that these two are equivalent. We will postpone the proof for the time being. Uh, now let us look at certain, some examples of uh, right linear uh, grammars. If you consider this context free, context free grammar s goes to a s r epsilon, you know what is the language generated by this grammar, we have discussed this for several times that is the language a power k such that k greater than or equal to 0, this is the language generated by this grammar. And you can clearly see that any non terminal symbol that is appearing on right hand side of each production rule that is appearing in the rightmost position of the production rule and thus you can see by definition this is a right linear grammar and the language generated by this is a power k such that k greater than or equal to 0. Now, as I have remarked that left linear grammars and right linear grammars are equivalent at least for this example, now I will uh, give a left linear grammar also here to understand that you have a left linear grammar for this language. If you consider the production rule which is of the form S goes to S A R epsilon, you can quickly understand that you can generate this language because the production rule this time what I am considering is S A R epsilon and whatever the way that I have proved that the, this grammar this grammar generates a power k k greater than or equal to 0, you can imitate the same and understand that this grammar also generates the same language and uh, this is a left linear grammar. Now, let us consider this language set of all those strings or a b with odd number of a's because number of a's in x is of the form 2 n plus 1 that means there are odd number of a's. I am claiming that it is a linear language. In fact, you can have a right linear grammar for this of course, equivalently you can have a left linear grammar for this language. For example, you can by now you understood that what is the what is the importance of non terminal symbols in the production rules like how we are constructing the production rules to generate a uh, particular language uh, targeted language. So, in this connection let me just demonstrate uh, construction of a grammar for this language. So, if you consider a string a 1 a 2 a n as we are claiming to give a right linear grammar a production rule I will look forward is of this form r of course, a goes to x. Now, here x is a terminal string in particular I will restrict myself to a particular uh, a symbol of the alphabet. So, that way in a derivation for example, a typical derivation what it will be it will generate first a 1 then you will have some non terminal symbol let me call it as a 1 and then since as I am claiming in each step I will be generating 1 1 symbol each. So, maybe a 1 a 2 then 
some non terminal symbol sorry a 2 and so on a 1 a 2 a n and say a n and this non terminal symbol if I terminate with m epsilon then I will have that a 1 a 2 a n. So, look here the type of production rule I am targeting a terminal string followed by at most one non terminal symbol because unless a non terminal symbol is there I cannot proceed further to continue this derivation. So, in the first step I am assuming not a terminal string at least one symbol I am assuming to generate say it is a 1 and the non terminal symbol because it is in the right side of the production rule I mean right end of the production rule I will have something that is a 1 and now if I continue like this in each step I am assuming to produce one one symbol each say a 1 a 2 here and so on in the nth step I am having a 1 a 2 a n with a n as a non terminal symbol here. But what is the criteria that a string to satisfy to fall in the language that is the number of a's in the string is odd number of a's in the string is odd. So, that means as and when I am producing a in the string I should somehow remember that at least it is not the count, but at least I should be able to understand that whether that the number of a's is even or odd because the possibility is either even or odd. So, when it is in the odd in number then I will give the possibility to terminate the derivation when the situation is I have produced so far even number of a's then I should take care that the deriv derivation should not terminate. So, that should that you should have a possibility to further continue that is the philosophy one may observe at this point of time and thus at least I should have two non terminal symbols one is essentially which allows you to continue the derivation further and which, which will not allow you to terminate and uh, one non terminal symbol which allows you to terminate the derivation. Let me call for the purpose O and E these are the two non, non terminal symbols. O is for the one at a particular situation I will have this non terminal symbol O in the derivation if so far I have produced odd number of A's. Likewise I will use E the non terminal symbol E if in the derivation see if so far I have produced even number of A's. So, thus I am choosing these two and you understand that in the beginning of the derivation of course, I do not have anything generated that means, in the beginning of the derivation that is uh, start symbol uh, of course, I am writing it here we have we are uniformly following S. So, whatever it is here that is even number of A's the number of A's is 0. So, that means, the start symbol that means, the derivation if I start at E then thereafter I will continue. So, I will start with E and for example, if I have generated B for example, if I have generated B in the beginning then the situation is so far I have produced even number of A's and thus I can connect it to E here because as I have mentioned at a particular sentential form if I am getting E that means, so far I have produced even number of even number of A's here there are 0 number of A's and thus I can have this kind of step. Suppose, if I have produced in the beginning A then since I have so far odd number of A's in the derivation we will have O here. So, let me look at the first step this way. Now, the situation is if I have odd number of A's I have the possible I should have the possibility to terminate the derivation whereas, in case of E I should not have that means, E will not be terminated that means, we do not introduce the production rule E goes to epsilon sort of, but you can introduce the production rule this O goes to epsilon and now clearly you can see that I have a production rule E goes to B E because I am saying this is one step similarly here E goes to A O is one production rule. Okay. In this context suppose if I further continue and suppose if you have produced A then as this production rule you know indicates that you have produced odd number of A's I can have this kind of thing E goes to A O that production rule that I can 
use. So, the production rules so far I am uh, let me write here E goes to B E, E goes to A O these two production rules that I have. And for example, now when you have non terminal symbol O and if you have produced one more A, what is this possibility? Now you have two A's that means even number of A's and this should be indicated by giving the non terminal symbol E in the derivation that means B A A E for example, if I have produced one more A that means now this O when you are with the non terminal symbol O in the sentential form if I produce A then I will connect this to E and uh, if I produce B then the number of A so far generated is not going to change and thus if there are odd number of A's then it is still odd number of A's. So, O goes to B O and as, as I had mentioned we give the possibility to terminate O through this epsilon and we do not give the possibility E goes to epsilon because if you have E in the sentential form there the number of A's is even and we should not uh, terminate the derivation. So, so, with this philosophy these are the production rules that we have discussed and uh, you can observe that these production rules precisely generate all those strings which, gen which uh, uh, all those strings which are having odd number of A's. Let me give a demonstration, let me give a derivation because the production rules remember that uh, now what is the grammar that I have to mention because I have not used S here as per our convention if I just give the production rules then S is the non terminal symbol which is always start symbol in this context we will consider E to be the start symbol. So, the grammar G with E O as non terminal symbols and A B as terminal symbols and a production rules and E as a start symbol this grammar with the production rules as we have written here E goes to B E R A O O goes to B O R A E R epsilon these are the production rules O goes to B O R A E R O goes to epsilon. So, these production rules if you consider the language generated by the grammar is as desired that means all those strings x in A B star such that the number of S in x is odd so you consider a typical derivation and observe that typical der uh, derivation which de which derives a terminal string and observe that that string is in this language and for every string in this language you can give a derivation in this grammar that you can observe so take it as an exercise exercise is is to show this thing. The language generated by this grammar is precisely generating those strings which are having odd number of s. And now, you look at here the, the production rules that I have obtained here. Every production rule has on the right side at most one non terminal symbol and thus this is a linear grammar and moreover the non terminal symbol that is appearing on the right side is appearing at the right end and thus you can see clearly this is. So, this question mark is your exercise and clearly this grammar G is right linear. Now, you can follow this philosophy and somehow to see that you can give a left linear grammar for this language. So, you can take this as an exercise. So, an exercise another exercise here this 
give a left linear grammar for the language x in a b star such that number of a's in x is odd. So, for the same language you can give a left linear grammar. So, we have we have understood that this language can be generated through a right linear grammar. Now, let us look at this theorem. The language generated by a right linear grammar is regular. Now, if you recollect, because what what are the examples just just before we have discussed this language, when we have introduced regular languages through regular expressions, if you remember this language is introduced and mentioned that I giving a regular expression for this language is a little bit difficult and we are going to give certain tools to to represent this and understand that it is a regular language. So, in this context the concept of grammars particularly the concept of right linear grammars is given here and observed that you know this language can be generated through a right, right linear grammar. And as we have targeted saying that grammars will be a better tool and uh, this theorem is essentially capturing this philosophy mentioning that the language generated by right linear grammar is regular. That means, from this theorem you can conclude that the language just mentioned is in fact a regular language. Of course, we have not observed through a regular expression, but that philosophy is captured through this theorem. In fact, any regular language can be generated through a right linear grammar that is what is here. Now, proof of this theorem is little bit you know involved to other uh, uh, we can prove it here, but it will be little bit uh, intricate at this point of time and we will be introducing better tools to prove this theorem and you can have a very elegant proof later. So, we will postpone the proof of this theorem and of course, what is mentioned for every uh, regular language L there exists a right linear grammar that generates L. So, that means, what essentially the theorem says that the regular grammars precisely generates regular languages. Now, because this right linear grammars are generating uh, regular languages, we can now call them as regular grammars. And because of the equivalence between right linear grammars and left linear grammars, we can also say that left linear grammars are regular grammars. So, regular grammars hereafter if I if we use the term regular grammar that is you can say it is a right linear grammar or a left linear grammar. Now, let us look at some examples that we have already observed that the regular and corresponding right linear grammars we will give. So, that you will get famili uh, famili uh, familiarity with this right linear grammars and thus what are the languages for which you could not identify regular expressions you may try through right linear grammars to show that they are regular languages. Okay, this you have already observed that it is regular because you gave a regular expression for this because all those strings in which a b as a substring you know this is a regular language. What is the regular expression for that? That is a plus b whole star a b a plus b whole star. So, this is a regular expression you know that represents this language and that this is a regular language. Now, if you look for a right linear grammar for this you will get the familiarity how to give a right linear grammar for a regular language and then for regular languages if you analyze the strings and if you give corresponding right linear grammars because of the theorem you can conclude that they are regular languages. Although you do not have regular expressions, you may not uh, be able to give regular expression at this point of time. Once we prove that theorem, by that by the time 
you'll be you'll be able to give even regular expressions also although it may be very cumbersome to see and uh, tedious to write you may certainly give regular expressions for the regular languages so what is a right linear grammar or a regular grammar for this if you consider these production rules because again the philosophy is the non terminal symbols should represent in a derivation what is so far generated if you have a particular non terminal symbol in a particular sentential form in in a derivation it should give you the opinion it should give you the idea that what is the string so far that you have generated so for this purpose here we have considered you know yes and yet and of course once i say this is the grammar then yes is the start symbol of that grammar now this production rules because if you look at any string in this it is some x a b y for x y in with any number of a's i mean uh, with uh, any is a combination of any a's and b's that is an element of a plus b whole star but you should have at least one ab that is what is a typical string so the production rules here given are essentially to produce any string with a combination of a's and b's you know that production rules should be of this form as or bs because this production rules will generate any string with a's and b's in any combination but once you produce ab then again you can generate any string so that is the situation here but you should not terminate yes unless you produce ab because once we have a freedom here you might be just producing b's but you would not have produced any ab or you are, you would have produced several a's but you have not produced a b following to that so that way we we should not terminate the uh, terminate the symbol Uh, not terminal symbol yes so i don't have i will, i should not introduce the production rule s goes to epsilon here rather we connect to another not terminal symbol which will be used to terminate the uh, derivation but that non terminal symbol i will introduce only when we have produced ab in a derivation so for that purpose if you have produced ab then i connect to the non terminal symbol a this non terminal symbol a now can produce any string over ab that means again these rules and this you can terminate whenever you want so thus these are the production rules you know if you consider you can observe that the grammar with this production rules precisely generates this language again here you take it as an exercise to prove that the grammar g generates the language as desired and you understand that this is a right linear grammar again because any production rule here you observe if a non terminal symbol is appearing on its right hand side that is appearing at the right end of the production rule here or here or anywhere you see wherever the non terminal symbol is appearing on its right hand side you have that is appearing at the right end now let us consider this grammar s goes to little a capital a little b capital s r epsilon and uh, this a goes to little a capital s or little b capital a consider this and you can quickly see that this is a right linear grammar and now you can think of what is the for, for the right linear grammar what is the language associated to this grammar you can think of that and observe that that particular language that particular language because this is a right linear grammar you can understand that it is also a regular language you can think about this as an exercise and observe that the corresponding language for this grammar is regular it is easy to understand we have already discussed one similar 
uh, such example. If you analyze the strings generated by this, you can quickly ascertain what is the general representation of a string in the language and thus you can give the language in set builder form to understand that language is regular because it is generated through a right linear grammar. Now, let us consider this regular expression A star B plus and as you understand that that is a regular language the language represented by this is a regular language what is that this is all those strings of the form a power m b power n such that m greater than equal to 0 n greater than equal to 1. one since it is a star here you can have epsilon also here zero number of a's so that means you know strings of the form a power m b power n m can be zero but b uh, this n the number of b's here the following b's cannot be non zero here the number of b should be greater than or equal to 1 because b plus is used here now you can give a right linear grammar for this again here because you require at least one b so unless you produce b unless you produce b you should not have the termination of the derivation and of course you need not produce s yes, that is why the production rule s yes goes to b can if you use directly s yes goes to b in the first step you are not producing you are not going to produce any s yes, and after that you are going to produce any any number of b's at least one b of course and any number of b's you can produce and terminate the derivation by producing you know b's if you want that leading s yes, of course you have to use this production rule as many s yes as you want and then you connect to b and then produce number of b's as required and then terminate the derivation and observe that this grammar with of course s as a start symbol this grammar produces this language this grammar produces this language and uh, understand that this right linear grammar is generating this regular language now little more uh, complicated example that uh, you would not have attempted to give a regular expression for this as well. The number of A's, the number of A's in a string or A B is 2 mod 3. That means, if you take a string and count the number of A's divided by 3, the remainder should be 2. That is what the number of A's is congruent to 2 mod 3 means this. So, let us look at giving because we may not be able to think about a regular regular expression for this even for this even for the earlier language that is the number of a's is congruent to 1 mod 2 that means it is odd number of a's for that itself we have postponed to discuss uh, it is regular it is similar to that, but little more even complicated. But once you take the philosophy of the previous example, you can give a right linear grammar for this and hence you can observe this language is and hence you can observe the language is regular. What is the previous example? First, let me write the previous example that is number of s x is odd. So, this can be written as set of all x in a b star. So, I am trying to write in this form number of a's in x is congruent to 1 mod 2. Number of a's in x is congruent to 1 mod 2. So, that means when you divide the number of a's by 2, the remainder is 1 that is when you call the number of a's is odd. Now, what is the present example and we know a right linear grammar for this language we have already discussed a right linear uh, grammar for this. Now, in the present context what we are considering the number of a's in x is congruent to 2 mod 3. So, in the previous example we have considered two non terminal symbols because when you divide the number of a's the possibility of remainders either it is 0 or 1 that means either even number of a's you would have or odd number of a's you would have 
and that way we have considered two non terminal symbols and uh, when you are having in a sentential form o the which is representing odd number of which is representing odd number of a's then you are you give the possibility of terminating it otherwise you are you are not giving that means you have to continue to produce similarly here since you are dividing with 3 you can now consider and you look at the number of remainders uh, possible that is 0 1 2 so among these for these three remainders you know you give three non terminal symbols to start with maybe you can call them as a1 a2 a3 or a0 a1 a2 to represent uh, you know that is representing the remainder a not maybe you call it as a1 a2 these are the non terminal symbols a not if it is appearing in the sentential form that means i will i have produced you know i have produced the number of a's congruent to 0 mod 3 that means the remainder is 0 and when you have a1 that means the number of a's is congruent to 1 mod 3 that means the remainder when you divide it by 3 is 1 and similarly a2 the remainder is 2. Now in the beginning when I am starting the number of a's of course, so the non terminal symbol a1 should be the start symbol and if I am producing any b's, I am not going to worry to count there. So, that way a1 goes to say b a1, similarly this uh, sorry that uh, this a1 is not the start symbol, because the number of a's in the beginning is a naught, I mean the number of a's will be 0 and thus the remainder will be 0. So, a naught will be declared as a start symbol. and uh, the number of b's that you are producing in a naught we are not going to count and that way this production rule will help you to produce as many b's as you want when you have a 1 and similarly when you have a 1 you can produce as many b's as you want similarly for a 2. So, these are the production rules which are not worried to produce I mean uh, which are not worried to count the number of b's that you want to produce in a in a string and now in a sentential form say we have started with this start symbol a naught and after finitely many steps you have produced some string x and suppose you have a naught here. As we are targeting right linear grammar the non terminal symbol will always be at the right end. So, that is how I am writing this way suppose you have a naught here what is the meaning of this the number of a's in x is congruent to 0 mod 3 that means so far when you divide that you have 0 number of I mean uh, the remainder will be 0 on the number of s that is the meaning if you have a naught. Now, if you have produced one more a because as far as b is concerned we have already discussed about the production rules here these three production rules are given. Suppose if you want to produce a then what it should be what should it become this a naught. So, since you are adding one more a the remainder will become now 1. So, thus if you are from a naught if you are producing one more a then I have to connect it to a 1 and similarly if I have a 1 in this place the number of a's that are produced say let me now use this production rule and continue this derivation that is x a a 1. So, that means in x a I have you know the number of a's in x a is congruent to 1 mod 3. If you have one more a generated that means from a 1 if you want to generate one more a you have to connect it to a 2 because a 2 is representing that uh, remainder 2 that remainder 2. So, this production rule can be introduced that way and for example, when you are at a 2 if you have produced one more a then the remainder will become 0. So, it should be connected to a naught. So, along with these three rules we include these three rules along with these three rules we include with these three rules, uh, three rules and where we have to terminate because our target is to produce all those strings in which the number of a's is congruent to 2 mod 3 whenever in a string if you have produced with this condition that means you have the non terminal symbol a 2 in that. So, 
this non terminal symbol a 2 can be terminated. So, the production rule r epsilon when a 2 goes to epsilon can be introduced for this purpose and thus you understand systematically that this 6 plus 6 plus 1. So, total 7 rules what is the derivation you consider you can produce any string in which the number of a's is 2 uh, is congruent to 2 mod 3 and conversely you consider any string in which you have a's and b's and number of a's is congruent to 2 mod 3. If you consider then you can produce using you can produce that string you can derive that string in this grammar with the 7 rules. So, the grammar with the 7 rules with start symbol a naught that is important here with start symbol a naught can generate this language the desired language. Of course, here I have mentioned with s that is a naught and a is taking uh, care of uh, a is taking the role of a 1 and b is taking the role of a 2 because a is when I have in a sentential form when s is appearing the start symbol that means the number of s is congruent to 0 mod 3 that is the start symbol. So, s is equal to a naught a is equal to a 1 b is equal to a 2 you consider and this 7 rules generates this language and hence and hence this language is regular because this is a right linear grammar and hence the language is regular. Now, let me give one more example that number of zeros in string is even if and only if number of ones in a string is odd. So, if you consider all those strings in over 0 1 with this condition number of zeros in x is even if and only if number of ones in x is odd. The condition itself is looking little bit complicated you can of course, what you can do you can little bit analyze this condition this this logical statement you can little bit analyze and give the appropriate conditions mean uh, uh, sort of primitive conditions and you may try for a right linear grammar or so called regular grammar for this to understand this is regular. Of course, trying for a regular expression is anyway difficult and a simple point for you is you may try for a regular grammar for this, but it will also be tedious I mean to analyze and understand. We will introduce even better tools to understand regular grammars further and you can understand that this is regular in future. So, in order to go in the direction of that uh, in order to introduce a better tool to understand regular grammars, we first give one representation that is called a digraph representation for this regular grammars or right linear grammars and this representation will give you the facility to understand the a better tool to think of. Uh, a better tool uh, for regular languages that is the digraph representation. So, this digraph representation I will introduce this digraph representation for a regular grammars. So, given a right linear grammar g n sigma p s we define a digraph v e where the vertex set is the non terminal symbols union with a new symbol I consider say dollar and the edge set e is formed as follows. If you take a production rule that is of the form a terminal you know a, a, a goes to x b form or a goes to x. So, when you have the production rule a goes to x b then I make the non terminal symbols a b they are vertices in the digraph I will make them adjacent a, you will put an r from a to b or if you have the production rule of the form a goes to x then I consider the edge between uh, from a to the new symbol dollar. Of course, what are the arcs that I am introducing here we will label them. So, this is a label digraph as a matter of fact that is labeled by whatever is this whatever is the string that you have here that x will be the label of that arc. So, that is that is how we are defining this digraph representation for a right linear grammar. Now, let us look at an example if you consider this right linear grammar 
this is the digraph corresponding to that because you see S A there are the two non terminal symbols I have two nodes here S and A and a new node with the dollar and whatever is the production rule that you consider accordingly the arcs are introduced because S goes to A S R B S that means you have an arc from S to S labeled A of course, you have another arc that means here is an essentially loop here from S to S labeled B also we are simply putting one loop here and labeling A comma B. Similarly, when you connect from S to A you have the terminal string A B. So, that is the label of this arc from going from S to A and in A you have a loop for A and B that is how it is given and now when you have a terminal string that is the only thing here that S goes to epsilon is only such production rule. So, those production rules will give you arcs from that particular non terminal symbols to the new symbol dollar that is what is here this epsilon is connected to uh, is connecting from A to dollar. So, thus this representation you know this this example I hope illustrates you how to give a digraph for a right linear grammar and not only that if you are given a digraph representation for a right linear grammar you can write the corresponding production rules that is not a big deal look at for example, this digraph for a right linear grammar you can quickly say what are the corresponding production rules. You can say that these two are non terminal symbols in that S and B are the non terminal symbols and the production rules are S goes to A S and S, S goes to A S is a production rule and uh, you can say that S goes to B is a production rule because epsilon, epsilon B means S goes to B is a production rule and you have a production rule B goes to B B. B capital B and uh, you know you are terminating with the production rule B goes to little b because that is going to dollar. So, these are the production rules for that. So, given a digraph representation for a right linear grammar you can write the corresponding production rules also. And now, here one important philosophical point I will introduce which fills, uh, which gives you the better understanding when we are talking about a better tool for regular uh, uh, languages. The pass in the digraph represents derivations. Particularly, if when we are interested from the start symbol to the uh, you know the pass from start symbol to the dollar. Now, if you consider the derivation, S goes to A S, that goes to A A S and goes to A A B, and then that goes to A A little b. Corresponding to this path, in the previous example, you can quickly see that this is the corresponding path this is the corresponding path and uh, the concatenation of the labels on this path called labels of the path hereafter we may call that gives the desired string because if you concatenate a a epsilon b if you concatenate these labels that is the label of this path that you can see this is the string that you are deriving from the start symbol s yes, in the in the derivation. So, that means the labels uh, if you take the labels of the paths from the start symbol s yes, to dollar that gives you the that give uh, corresponding to which you can of course, have a derivation in the grammar and that string can be generated to the grammar. So, through this digraph representation we can understand that the pass from uh, labels of the pass from start symbol to the dollar which are the corresponding derivation the corresponding derivation will give you the derivation for the string and conversely. So, we can easily see the correspondence between these two derivations and uh, paths the uh, correspondence and you can see that this concept will give you better understanding better understanding about uh, you know derivations derivations through this digraph representation.